Coming in David Empringham with just one victory to his credit this year on the Players Limited Toyota Atlantic Championship at the street circuit at Trois Rivières in Canada. Meanwhile, Claude Bourbonnet, who is chasing him for the championship, has six victories. But for Bourbonnet, it has been win or not finish. We ride along now with Billy Rowe, holder of the world close course speed record for electric vehicles. Here we go. His Exide sponsored battery powered IndyCar averaged 100 miles an hour plus around the one mile oval at Phoenix, Arizona. Flashes underneath the flag stand down into the electrifyingly fast turn number one here at Nazareth. Short shoot to turn two. Long, long left hander. Billy Rose in good shape. Now let's get caught up with our leader, Claude Bourbonnet. As we look at Bourbonnet and Imbringham, and Bourbonnet's been able to put a lap on him, he's probably foaming at the mouth as he was catching up with Imbringham. He wanted by him, and he wanted by him bad. Imbringham needs to hold on and score as many points as he can because Bourbonnet is trying to walk away with this championship. They are running first and seventh right now. If the race were to end right now, Bourbonnet would take the points lead by five points over David Imbringham. Make that six points. I did not include the point for pole that Claude Bourbonnet picked up today. So, Claude Bourbonnet doing everything he can to wrench that championship out of the grip of David Empringham. There is Jacques Villeneuve now. Villeneuve trying to make his way back after a flat tire in the early going, and Villeneuve will pit again. Look at the blistering on the right front. That's very interesting, and the other thing that's going to be interesting is how similar are the setups on these two team cars, these two players' cars, because if Villeneuve has blistering on the right front, what is Bourbonnet's right front tire going to be like? There's been no luck at all when it comes to tires for Jacques Villeneuve as he comes to a smoky stop. Absolutely destroyed those tires. Let's pick up the battle for fifth place between Patrick Lamary. You like my French, Brian? <laughs> And the 19 car of Jeff Barker. Barker trying to solidify his position. He was running as high as second. Now he has drifted back all the way to sixth spot. Bob, your French is probably better than uh, the Texans. You can't speak it. So I'll try not to even bother. Pronunciation is the job skill <laughs> in the 90s. Grammar is dead. It's pronunciation now. Oh, underneath they go. Too wide. Oh, and Barker almost got caught up by slower traffic. Barker trying to sneak through there. He wants to let Patrick make the openings in the traffic, and Barker wants to slip through the same hole. Meanwhile, up front, Claude Bourbonnet motors along. His teammate, Jack Villeneuve, has tire troubles. We'll see if Claude does. Here's Calvin with team manager Barry Green. Barry, obviously, Jack's had his problems today, but we see he made a second stop, obviously blistered some tires. Any chance that Claude is going to suffer the same fate? Well, we don't think so. You know, we think our main problem is we, we had to change that left rear after the after the start line, in, after the first lap incident, uh, and we lost our balance. You know, we spent a lot of time matching the sets, and we lost our balance. We had a big understeer. I think that's a problem. Claude, right now, we've warned him that uh, Jack blistered a right front, but I think he's okay. His car's handling very well right now. So put it down to handling difficulties for Villeneuve. Meanwhile, here's Peter Fossetta Jr. on the right, trying to get underneath Bert Hart, but Hart holds him off going into the corner. I've never seen a, an Atlanta car that wide in my life. It's amazing. Hart moved over on the straightaway and wanted to make it difficult for Fossetta to get by, but uh, there comes a point when wide is too wide. We'll, we'd have to look at that again to see, but uh, there's a fine line between being wide and blocking. That was for third place. Hart trying to keep Peter Fossetta Jr. behind him. Fossetta has blossomed in the second half of this season. He came on strong at Loudon on the one-mile oval there. And since then, he has been a factor in just about every race. This is a battle for a possible spot on the podium. We'll continue to follow it and be back. The Toyota Atlantic Championship is for third place. Bert Hart all over the racetrack trying to keep the green and white car of Peter Fossetta behind him be interesting to see what the officials say about this uh, you're allowed one move down the straightaway which means you can move left and drive any line you want you're not supposed to be able to move back on your line or pick another line after you've decided once to move so it'll be interesting to see, to see what is said i'm sure that falsetta is very frustrated with what's happening falsetta has dropped back now now this is car number 12 did he hit the wall he spun on the back side that's Jimmy Puglisi from Oceanside, New York, just outside New York City in his very first 
Players Limited start, also his very first start on an oval. That's an awful big undertaking, Brian. We're going to find out what kind of a heart rate he has because to run his first pro race on an oval like this and then to spin and not touch anything, hopefully he's in good cardiovascular shape because I guarantee you his heart's pounding right now. And we have Back at Nazareth, the safety car is off. Leader, Cloud Bourbonnet, takes the green flag and look at the gap he opens up, Brian Till. This is absolutely amazing, the way Bourbonnet has just grabbed this race by the throat. There is the gold car of David Embringham, still in eighth place. He needs to get around the car ahead of him, Billy Rowe. I don't think he's going to do it there, and, and the problem is Mike Palumbo is back behind that battle. He's got three cars, and now four cars in between himself and Claude Bourbonnet. Coming up one of those is Jacques Villeneuve. Jacques Villeneuve coming up quickly. Villeneuve hopefully has cured his handling problems. This is a sprint. We're down to the last few laps of the race here at Nazareth. And Bert Hart and Peter Fawcett are right there behind Colombo also. That's the battle for second place. It's going to turn into a three-car battle. Second, third, and fourth. The black car with the yellow wings of Mike Colombo. Then the black with the day-glow orange of Bert Hart. And then the white and green of Peter Fawcett Hart. Jr. These three guys have lap traffic in front of them. It's going to be difficult. It looks like Colombo might have dropped off the pace a little bit. Hart's climbing all over the back of him. But he's got to think about Fawcetta behind him. Exactly the point. Palumbo seems to have lost a little performance. Each of these Toyota four-cylinder engines makes about 240 horsepower. Now Palumbo sticks his nose up underneath Billy Rowe. Can't get around. Goes side by side as Hart closes in. It's difficult. You say, why doesn't Billy Rowe get out of the way? He's fighting with the car in front of him. And Fawcett Jr. slashed down to the inside, but he can't get by either. Billy Rowe and Colin Truman in the red car and the green one holding up this line of cars. Now Fawcett Jr. goes underneath. Incredibly tight racing here. Rowe slides high. Colombo underneath him and Bird Hart trying to stick his nose in there. Colombo now with clear track as Billy Rowe stays high on the outside. Now Fossetta will try the outside, but he comes up behind Rowe. He got bottled up out there, and that's frustrating for him because now he's dropped well off the pace, and that leaves Bird Hart to fight with Mike Colombo. Rowe holding his line. Fossetta Jr. goes underneath, and then the number three car of Patrick Lemarie. Big spin. And into the wall goes car 09, Bobby Carville. That's tough for Bobby Carville. You know, he qualified well. He qualified third. And he was running well. And seventh victory of the 1993 Players Limited Toyota Atlantic season. Here's a look at our final results. Bourbonnet, never any doubt about this one. Bourbonnet takes a six-point lead over David Empringham now for the championship. In second, Michael Palumbo matching the best performance of the year for a swift chassis. Bert Hart finishes third, followed by Peter Fossetta Jr. and Patrick Lemarie. Six through tenth, Jeff Barker, the last car on the lead lap of the checkers, followed by David Empringham, Billy Rowe, Colin Truman, and Sergey Zordica. Jack Villeneuve, Bobby Carville, Steve O'Hara, Jimmy Pugliese, and Jamie Gallus round out the field. Lord Bourbonnet, great race today. Obviously, this puts you back in the title hunt. You now got a good points lead over David Empringham. What happened out there today? How'd it go? It was perfect. I mean, the team did a great job. The player's limited car was perfect. I just had to keep it in one piece on the track and watch my gap, and everything was perfect. Congratulations. Thank you. Back to you in the booth, Bob. All right, thank you, Calvin. Here's a look at the standings, and the only one...